light, two candles to watch for Messiah. Let the light banish darkness. He shall feed the flock like a shepherd. Gently lead them home. Good morning, church, and welcome to worship here at Trinity Lutheran in Stillwater. Our apologies, the first round of video did go out on another Facebook page, um, on our drive-in page, but I think we've got it all set and are ready to go now. Uh, So thank you for joining us. Thank you for continuing uh, to be God's people in the midst of uh, all circumstances, even when our technology is uh, is a little suspect. Um, Thank you for taking the time and also for joining us in this season of Advent and blessed St. Nicholas Day to those who are celebrating that as well. I know we put out our little boots this morning um, to capture some of those treats. Just a couple of announcements before we begin. First, the drive-in will be open uh, today, and uh, we'll continue to keep it open week by week. Look for both our e-blast and communications over our Facebook page for more information, but we feel like we've made some really good adaptations to that to keep the drive-in open throughout the rest of September or December, and all are welcome to join us out there. Also coming up uh, these, this next week, we have some great ways for you to experience and enter into the drama of Christmas. Uh, next week, both online and also out at the drive-in, we're going to invite you to dress up as your favorite character um, and find your place in both the hastiest and honkiest nativity of 2020. Um, you don't have to think too much about it, uh, but grab some sheep ears or, um, or a scarf or a bed sheet, something that you can use to dress up as one of the characters um, and find yourself in both the wonder and the awe of Christmas. We will also be offering a drive through live nativity experience next week. Um, that's from 3 to 5 p.m. out in the large parking lot. Um, For that, we're going to have uh, some live animals, some familiar characters, some music that will wrap together that whole time, um, and it will be a great experience for you and the whole family. So please join us uh, next Sunday from 3 to 5 p.m., and we'll have a little bit more information on that this week. And then finally, just a, a couple of parish concerns that we want to share with you. First, we'd like to lift up in our prayers the Germscheid family on the sudden death of Tom Germscheid. Uh, both Maury Germscheid and Ginny would like to um, ask for your prayers and comfort during this uh, time for them. Um, also, we grieve today with the families of both Dwight Peterson and John Syme, and we uh, lift them up to the uh, loving embrace of God and keep them in, and their families in our prayers. Advent does remind us that God is with us even in our waiting, even in our wandering, um, even in the wilderness, always calling us in and calling us home. We take just a moment to prepare our hearts and our minds and our bodies for worship.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Listen, my beloved people, God has given us work to do. God has called each of us before we were even born. It was God who named us. It is God who claims us. The light of God's love shines in us. Sing for joy, O heavens, and exult, O earth. Break forth, O mountains, into singing. For the Lord has comforted his people and will have compassion on all who wait. Let's sing. pleased to be with you today. Please pray with me. On the second Sunday of Advent, we are still the people walking. We are still people in the dark, and the darkness looms large around us. Beset as we are by fear, anxiety, brutality, violence, loss, a dozen alienations that we cannot manage. We are, we could be, people of your light, so we pray for the light of your glorious presence as we wait for your appearing. We pray for the light of your wondrous grace as we exhaust our coping capacity. We pray for your gift of newness that will override our weariness. We pray that we may see and know and hear and trust in your good rule. That we may have energy, courage, and freedom to enact your rule through the demands of this life. We give our life to you, and with deep joy and high hope. Amen. Now listen as I read Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. 
Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the watercourses of the Negev. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The good news for today comes to us again from the prophet Isaiah. Islands, listen to me. Pay attention, distant peoples. Yahweh called me before I was born and named me from my mother's womb. God made my mouth a sharp sword and hid me in the shadow of the hand of the Most High. The Almighty made me in the, in a, into a sharpened arrow and concealed me in God's quiver. The Holy One said to me, You are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. I had been thinking, I have toiled in vain, I have exhausted myself for nothing. Yet all the while my cause was with Yahweh, and my reward was with my God. Thus says Yahweh, who formed me in the womb to be God's servant, who destined me to bring back the children of Jacob and gather again the people of Israel. Yet it is not enough for you to do my bidding, to restore the tribes of Leah and Rachel and Jacob and bring back the, survival, the survivors of Israel. I will make you the light of the nations, so that my salvation shall reach to the ends of the earth. Shout for joy, you heavens. Exalt, you earth. You mountains break into happy cries, for Yahweh consoles the people and has compassion on those who are afflicted. But Zion said, Yahweh has abandoned me. Adonai has forgotten me. Does a woman forget her baby at the breast or fail to cherish the child of her womb? I will never forget you. Look and see, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are ever before me. Raise your gaze and view the horizon. They're all gathering, and they're all coming home. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. And now a word for our children from Norma Wilson. Hi, kids. My name is Norma. Like you, I am cozy in my home. The Christmas tree lights are on and I can see the light from our Advent candles. 
When my children were little, we would sing, This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. I think you know that song too. We say Jesus is the light inside us, and we can share Jesus' light with others. There is a Bible verse where God says, I will give you as a light to the world. These words tell us Jesus was coming to be a light to help us see what God wants us to do. I think God is also telling you to show God's light to the world. I started thinking, how do we show the light of Jesus in our home? I called my family right away and asked my grandchildren, how do you share Jesus' light at home? They said just what you might say. I help with the dishes. We make birthday cards or signs for each other. I help my brother or sister. They say kind words like, I like your drawing. Another child loves God's creatures and helps care for their dog. They pray for each other and for others. At bedtime, they make the sign of the cross on each other's foreheads. They remember to say thank you. If you peek in my grandchild's bedroom, you could see a word picture. I am a child of God. Or another grandchild's room, God is within her. She will not fall. I love getting new books. This one, Be the Change, a lists and ideas journal to help you shine your light for Jesus. I love that your Jesus light just doesn't stay in your home. It goes out with you. Before you go out to a play date or to school, you can pray to let your light shine. Think about ways to give kindness, love, and joy in your neighborhood. Maybe leaving chalk messages on a driveway. Use your gifts to shine your light in playing and caring for others. Today, you don't have to make a phone call like I did. Just talk to your family about all the ways you shine your light in your home and how you share Jesus' light with others. God loves to listen to us. Let's talk to God right now. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for sending Jesus to be the light to guide us. Help me bring Jesus' light to others. Amen. Thank you so much, Norma, for being a light to us and to so many uh, in our community. Well, I'm sure many of you have noticed and picked up on this too, but I feel like the sunsets of these last weeks have been particularly stunning. Orange and pink and full of depth and dimension and imagination. Granted, they do start about noon, uh, but who's complaining? I took in one of these blazing scenes in the sky a few afternoons ago as I sat perched on top of our roof with a roll of C9 LEDs and my coat pockets stuffed with little light shingle clips. It felt somewhat serendipitous and somewhat ironic to be adding these tiny manufactured glimmers of light to the soon-to-be darkness, even as I marveled at the intensity of the colorful God-infused horizon. Some of you might recall from last Christmas, which feels about like 20 years ago, that I've had my work and challenge cut out for me in trying to win back a few dad points after my girls called me out for being the grinchiest looking house in our neighborhood. Can we just have a few lights, dad? Well, friends and my sweet girls, if there was ever a year or a season to add a few more lights to our neighborhood and to our own little isolation chambers, I think 2020 and Advent would be it. To deck our halls and hang out our greenery and wreaths from our doorways and the houses of our hearts with whatever God-infused joy and love and light and hope we can muster. It's not just for dad points anymore. 
from my rooftop roof, roost, diligently adding and clipping each light one by one by one by one and preparing our home for the way of the Lord, I was reminded how differently we are all experiencing our living quarters this year. Our homes and our hallways and our doorposts and our windowsills and our living rooms and our tables. Both what points outward and is also on the inside. Like squinting into the distance, these structures have blurred in so many ways. They are no longer simply our places of lodging. Over these last months, they have also transformed into our offices and cubicles, our sanctuaries and places of worship, our Zoom laboratories and test kitchens and classrooms, our gymnasiums and dance studios and staycation destinations. They have been both the place of our work and the place of our rest our peace and our pain, our longing and play, rooms filled with both shouts of joy and shouts of frustration, our best attempts at pods and bubbles, our part in this pandemic puzzle, as well as sometimes what feels like a prison and keeping our neighbors and our families and our hospitals with beds to spare. These structures have absorbed so much of our need for some type of semblance of consistency and traditions and control, attaching one glittering diode to the end of the strand or adjusting that shepherd just one more time to get it right in the manger scene. In this season of so many expectations, both real or imagined, and typically joyful preparations, probably more now than ever, I imagine many of our dwellings have taken on these strange sort of Seussian components and are bearing the burden of far more than their original shape, far more than just lumber or siding or insulation, Our homes have taken on our flesh in new ways. Some more empty than they once were or empty chairs awaiting diagnoses. Too many cupboards in our communities more bare than before. Too many with raising anxieties about rent and job insecurity. Too many with doors still welcoming in those who are daily risking their lives and their well-being to keep others safe. Others also opening some new passageways or rooms for understanding our privilege and the way that we're polarized and the different racial and social disparities that still plague us. We usually expect in these colder months as a church that these can be the bluest of the entire year, with more funerals and seemingly more pain even in a normal year. But as our prayer lists seem to be bursting at the ceiling, I imagine that you are adding pages to yours as well. And this is on top of the boxes and the bins that we've collected of our regular grief, added to our already fatigued and exhausted hearts. Which is all the more reason that we read and we rehearse these lines again from the prophet of Isaiah in our houses of worship this time of year. That we remember and we recall God's work to bring Israel home that God has and God does bring us back together again over and over from generation to generation. As Pastor Chris lifted up this last week that the importance of context in this situation, that Israel is longing for true home, craving places of familiarity and safety and warmth, yearning for joy and songs of glad tidings, grasping for the feeling and the touch of togetherness again, exhausted from what feels like too much to bear for too long, frustration building over poor leadership and entitled behavior, 
folks wondering if God is really with us or has forgotten about their suffering. And into this context, into this longing and wondering and exhaustion, wondering if they will ever get home, God speaks comfort through the prophet. I will never forget about you. I will never forget about us. God does not forget God's children. God says, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are forever before me. Raise your gaze and view the horizon. They're all gathering. They're all coming home. This vision of home reminds the people that God is present and working even as the journey is still not yet over. Even as they are exhausted and fatigued and their lives and eyes still feel blurry. And it's not just when the people finally arrive that everything is going to be okay. No, Isaiah invites the people to look up, to raise their gaze to the horizon now that they are a light to the nations even while they are still in captivity, even in their most challenging days. Isaiah invites the people to both break forth into song and into lives of service even as their rooftops are still in Babylon. I think that continues to be our invitation as well both from our physical dwellings as well as the home that God seeks to dwell in our hearts and our minds and our bodies in the incarnation. As we continue in this season of Advent and we move toward Christmas when God seeks to blur the lines between the infinite and our very flesh, may our homes reflect the prophet's hope. May we look to the skies and to each other for the color-infused promise of God's love and light. Thanks be to God. Amen. On the second Sunday of Advent, let us pray for this weary world. Come to us, O God, as we await the coming of Christ. Come to the church, O faithful God. Assist our bishop, our pastors, 
and all who minister in this church and churches throughout the world. Show us what is your way and where are your paths and awaken all the baptized to the guidance of your Holy Spirit. Come to the Jewish people, O covenant God, at this their festival of Hanukkah, end the world's anti-Semitism and bring peace to Jerusalem. Come to the earth, O creating God. As the seasons change, protect all that lives. Mend the wounds of environmental damage and restore balance to ecosystems. Come to the nations, O holy God. Inspire governmental officials to strive for peace within their land and between countries. Remember the people of Afghanistan and Ethiopia. Guide the nations towards cooperative efforts when facing global issues. Come to our country, O righteous God. Teach us how to end discrimination and to value diversity. Bring political parties into helpful conversation with each other. Assist the unemployed and uphold people with physical and intellectual disabilities. Come to all who are facing the coronavirus, O compassionate God. Protect the vulnerable, heal the sick, embrace the dying, sustain medical workers, prepare a vaccine, end this scourge. Come to all who suffer, O merciful God. Empower us to feed the hungry in our nation and around the world. Gather into your healing embrace those who are afraid, lonely, sick, or struggling with depression. Come, O tender-hearted God, to each one of us and receive our silent prayers. Come to us, O eternal God, as you came to the saints. We remember especially Saint Nicholas and his care for children, and those we name before you now. Bring us with them through our wilderness into the fulfillment of your promises. Come near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. There is no longer Jew or Greek, slave or free, male and female. You are all one in Christ Jesus. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please take a moment to offer each other a sign of peace. And now we invite you to take a moment to um, gather together what you need to celebrate communion and to take some time to share your offerings. Again, we extend our abundant thanks to you for your powerful response to stewardship as a witness to your commitment to the ministries that we share here in the Valley. And now we invite you to take that time to collect your coins, to go online and give, to write your check, however it is you like to give. We invite you to take a moment to do that. Generous God, you have created all that is, and you provide for us in every season. Bless all that we offer, that through these gifts the world will receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray. Amen.
And we invite you now to respond to the words of the great thanksgiving with your voices and with your bodies. God is with us yesterday, today, and forever. Let us lift up our hearts. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks for the abiding love of God. It is wonderful to give our thanks and praise to God. Let us pray. Creator of our first home, from the beginning you have tended to our need for connection, belonging, shelter, and hearth, creating an earthly home abundant in resources and extravagant beauty, moving with us again and again through the wilderness from captivity to the liberation of home, gathering us around tables in the wilderness, at festivals, and in an upper room, where in, on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this and remember me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this and remember me. With this bread and cup, we celebrate the gift of Jesus who drew us home to you. Through this meal, strengthen our feet and voices to be the bearers of your good news and a welcome home for all people. To you be blessing and honor and glory and might, now and forever. Amen. Gathered together by the power of the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. The meal is ready, and everyone who's tuning in is welcome to join us from home, gather bread or crackers, wine or juice, and receive these gifts, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Thanks be to God. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and abundant God, you have done great things for us and we rejoice. In this bread and cup you give us life forever. In your boundless mercy strengthen us and open our hearts to the world's needs. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
The glad sound, the Savior comes, the Savior promised long. Let every heart prepare a throne, and every voice a song. He comes the prisoners to release, in Satan's bondage held. The gates of brass before him burst, the iron fetters yield. He comes the broken heart to bind, the bleeding soul to cure. And with the treasures of his grace to enrich the humble Glad Hosanna, Prince of Peace, your welcome shall proclaim. And hands eternal arches ring with your beloved name. Our time of worship has come to a close and our service to the world continues. But before you receive a blessing, I want to extend a word of thanks to Maya for her beautiful dancing, Gene for his music, Rachel and Norma for their messages this morning, and for the team that is with us every Sunday as we bring this to you. In addition to Carol and Pastor Peter and me, we thank Phil, Ash, Clint, Charlie, and Monty, without whom we could not do this week to week, so please hold them in your prayers and gratitude this season as well. Now receive a blessing as you prepare to go into your day. The creator of the stars, bless your advent waiting. The long, un, the long expected Savior, fill you with love. And the unexpected Spirit, guide your journey now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God.